Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and today we are checking out Star Trek V The Final Frontier. I am not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about this one for two reasons. I'm nervous for two reasons. One, because everyone keeps saying that the odd Star Trek movies are the bad ones and this is one of the odd Star Trek movies. But two, everyone has said that Star Trek V sucks or at least has like glimpses of something in there. Like glimpses of something good but is mostly bad. So I'm really nervous for this movie but at the same time time I'm really excited I've really liked all the Star Trek movies so far obviously as I've been releasing them I've seen the comments and a lot of people have been mixed especially on the first movie on the motion picture or as some people say the slow motion picture and then on Star Trek 3 my Star Trek 4 reaction hasn't come out yet but Star Trek 3 as well there were definitely some mixed reactions to that one but I've enjoyed all of them so maybe I will enjoy this one I'm kind of going in optimistically but also I'm very nervous at the same time anyways the Enterprise is back Spock is is back the whole crew is back together and I'm just excited to see I'm just excited to see them interact really that's that's kind of what I want I just want to see some good crew interactions on our beautiful Enterprise ship and before we get into this reaction let me do the lighting so let me turn on the light and we decide what color it should be Boop. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the color of the lighting today, I am going to go like yellowy orange because the poster of this movie is like a yellow color. It might not show up very well on camera because it's like 10.30 in the morning right now and it's very sunny outside, a little bit warm. So, you know, it might not show up very well, but for me, I can see it very clearly and I think yellow will be a good color for this because the poster itself is very yellow. And if you'd like to check out more of my reactions, you can head over to my Patreon of uncut reactions to many of the movies I watch on YouTube as well as early access reactions to my movies that come out one week early. Thank you so much if you check it out. I don't know why I did a peace sign, but thank you so much if you check it out. Let's get back to the video. Okay, let's get into The Final Frontier. Weird that this one's called The Final Frontier and then there's a Star Trek 6, so this isn't The Final Frontier. Anyways, a little confusing to me, but that's okay, that's okay. Star Trek 5, let's get into it. I hope you enjoy my reaction to Star Trek 5, The Final Frontier. The planet of galactic peace looks very barren. What's happening? Who's this horse guy? He's kind of scary. Come on, load your gun. Oh, it's like a rock gun? Who is this guy? He looks so cool. Your pain runs deep. What do you know of my pain? Let us explore it. Who is this guy? Where did you get this power? He's like a messiah, you know? How can I repay you for this miracle? Join my quest. What do it, you do seek? it. The Holy Grail. The ultimate knowledge. Isn't that like 42? The ultimate knowledge is like 42. So I have a way to bring one here. But how? Whoa, plot twist. <laughs> But he's a Vulcan who's <laughs> emoting quite a bit, so he can't just be a Vulcan, right? Star Trek 5, Star Trek 5, the final frontier is going! The music always gets me so hyped for these movies, even if it's not gonna be the best movie. But I don't know, maybe this could be my favorite. We'll see. Ah, oh, music by Jerry Goldsmith, he's back! That's, ah, uh, yes, let's go! I'm so excited now for the music alone. Has anyone seen Free Solo? I watched someone climb, I think it's in Yosemite, and they climbed that big mountain thing, that big cliff face. Oh my god, if you haven't seen Free Solo, go watch Free Solo, it's amazing. I do wonder how they got these shots though, because that looks pretty real to me. This is actually giving me a little bit of vertigo at the moment. William Shatner directs. Okay, William, let's see what you got. It is beautiful. I'll give him that. It is beautiful. But let's keep climbing. I don't want you to fall. Important reason for climbing a mountain. And that is because it's there. <laughs> Why not? Isn't that a famous line or quote? It is not in the best of moods. God damn irresponsible. I love, I love Bones so much. Yeah, I'm liable to be one. Yes! Oh! 
Come on, Spock, use those rocket boots. <laughs> Kirk, you were inches away from death there. Man literally looks like a Jedi. Oh, this is a Klingon? Oh, yeah. Our new Romulan. And I know this guy. What's he from? They're taking over Paradise City. They broke down the gate. Oh, there's actually quite a few of them now. Paradise Lost. I like that. I am really curious to see who this guy is. I feel like he's the antagonist. My prisoners. Prisoners? We're already prisoners here on this worthless lump of rock. That's a good one, dude. That's a good one. It's the only place in the entire galaxy that has the three of you. Oh, you yeah. Are, what true, you want, fair enough. But I can tell you this. You can use them as political hostages. Ah, we're going to see the beautiful Starship Enterprise. Whenever I see this building, I get so excited because I know what's about to happen. Says Enterprise, shakedown cruise report. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That shot's from the uh, fourth movie, though. Oh, Huda, I thought you were on leave. And I thought we were supposed to be going together. Oh, yeah. Red alert. Red alert. This is a red alert. Enterprise acknowledge. Oh, this is like an actual red alert. Commander Sulu here. Bad news, gentlemen. Shirley's been cancelled. Rescued at last. Return. <laughs> Rescued at last. We've been caught in a blizzard. <laughs> and we can't. <laughs> Thanks, Chekhov. Thank you. Right here. And we're starving. <laughs> Bipodal seeds, Doctor. Beans, Spock. But Beans. Can you got any more of that secret ingredient, Bones? <sighs> Be my guest. Thank you. Uh, it's alcohol. So fond of pointing out, Doctor. I'm half human. Well, it certainly doesn't show. Thank you. I, <laughs> nah. I knew I wouldn't die because the two of you were with me. Fair enough. And Spock also had his rocket jets, which is a good reason. I'll die alone. Oh, wait, no, that's so sad. What if he actually does die alone? His nerves. What do we do when Shirley comes along? We all we'll hang spend out. Spend it together. Yeah, you're all best friends. What are you doing? I'm preparing to toast a marshmallow. Marsh. <laughs> oh, Spock. I believe we are required to engage in a ritual known as the sing along. Yeah, you are. Row, row, row your boat. I love row. Do you, do you know row, 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 row your boat? That song did not come up in my research, Captain. The lyrics they're singing row 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 your boat row your boat gently down the stream row, merrily row, merrily row merrily merrily gently. okay okay let's go why didn't you jump in spock you need I to was sing. trying to comprehend the meaning of the words you don't need to you don't need to all right all right all right, all right. let's call it a night when you just wow, let's go to wow bones let's get some sleep Okay, you know what? That campfire scene was actually kind of nice. Just the three core cast members just having a laugh. Two of them were drunk. Spock wants to toast the marshmallow. It was actually kind of wholesome. I don't know. I just don't know. I can see that this movie... Oh, what? What? V'ger's back. Oh, and this ship is back. What the heck? Everything's back. Hold on a second. Don't shoot, don't shoot a Voyager. Oh my god. So we're gonna have Klingons, Romulans, and Terrans working together to save their own. Okay, this guy just wants to fight. Important orders from Starfleet Command. Why didn't you beep my communicator? You forgot to take it with you. Oh yeah. It's still a sexy ship. I am well versed in the classics, Doctor. Then how come you don't know row, row, row your boat? 
Oh, so true. Honestly, so true. Everyone knows that song. Which time, Captain? Very well, Mr. Scott Carey. How many times do I have to tell you the right tool for the right job? <laughs> yes. Yeah, when you sit around a campfire, you just smell like campfire for a few days. Well, we're dressing uh, informally, aren't we? You caught me on the way to... Go climb a rock. Plot course for Nimbus 3, Mr. Sula. Aye, sir. Course plotted. I wouldn't even try and fly this ship if the elevators don't even work. Why would you trust the warp engines? Yeah, it doesn't look like a very comfortable chair. <laughs> Yeah. And he's a legend, so he's gonna love engaging the Enterprise. Captain's log, star date 84. Not even worth it, don't even try anymore. I would appreciate your immediate response. That's him, that's him. Immediately. Do you know him? Do you know him? He's a very emotive Vulcan. You look like you've just seen a ghost. Perhaps I have, Captain. Perhaps I have. Who is he, your long lost brother? Spoke? I don't know. That's a bad joke. The knowledge and experience he sought were forbidden by Vulcan belief. Forbidden? Well, that's rough. He believed the key to self-knowledge was emotion, not logic. That's why he's so emotive. Got it, I got it, I got it. We're gonna have to get them out the old-fashioned way. We're yeah. going vessel now, entering quarter. Infiltration time. Still some really nice shots though of planets and space in this movie. They're scanning. This is a really nice shot actually. I like the blue lighting here. You can definitely tell though for the most part that this movie had a fairly low budget. The effects are a little wonky in this one. Starship to protect me. In the meantime, Captain Chekhov, I instruct you and your first officer to beam down to my coordinates. Well, we can't really beam down. Is she naked? Every single person distracted by this woman. Whoa. I've always wanted to play to It's a horo, a horo, a hora, <laughs> a horo. <laughs> That's her twin cousin's name. <laughs> the hostages are being held in that structure. Mm, okay, in the dance parlor. <laughs> it's a space rocket launcher. <laughs> Wow, Kirk really just whacked him. The phasers look kind of cool though. There's only room in this town for one man. What the heck, the cat lady? Oh my god, Kirk tossed that woman. Is she dead? Is she dead? Can she not survive water? If she touches water, does she die? How did she die? The hostages are on his side now, it looks like. Or maybe they, maybe he's promised them something great or something, I don't know. Oh, he backed off, he backed off. It's me. It's Cybok. Cybok, Cybok, I'm gonna write that down are under arrest for 17 violations of the Neutral Zone Treaty. This is not how Cybok wanted this meeting to go. My next violation, I intend to steal something. Wow, just steal something. Something very big! <laughs> the Enterprise! Oh! <laughs> What's he gonna do with the ship? Here comes that random Klingon ship that wants to fight the Enterprise. 
你小路，小辉，你小。This Klingon guy looks like a heavy metal rocker. You know, I can see him with an electric guitar on stage, head banging to his song. Once we've taken control of your vessel, we'll bring up the rest of our followers. Klingons are out there. What if the Enterprise gets destroyed again? I would be so sad. And re-raise the shields will take exactly 15.5 seconds. An eternity during which we'll be vulnerable to Klingon attack. Yeah, yeah. Then they intend to strike. Yes, thank you other Klingon. We cannot turn back. Just turn back for like 20 seconds. Stand by to execute the emergency landing plan B. <laughs> yeah, they have no idea what that is. He's good. Really? You better be good, Sulu. One, zero, five, mark two. Ah, oh, the Go music's Sulu. so intense right now. Oh. Go, Sulu. Go, Sulu. It worked. It worked. I'm proud of everyone. Wow, he just dodged that bot. Like it was in the Matrix or something. That gun slid so much. What the heck is it? Floor made of ice. Him! Spock, come on, man. Put him in the brig with Captain Kirk. Spock stays with me. Give me. Forgive you. I'll knock you on your goddamn ass. If you think it would help. You want me to hold him, Jim? You stay out of this. <laughs> Thanks, Bones, for your input. I ordered you to defend your ship. You ordered me to kill my brother. But the man may be a fellow His brother. That doesn't... No, 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 Captain, you do not understand. Oh, my God, I, I kind of guessed the twist. You mean he's your brother, brother? Ah! You made that up. I made that up. At the start of this, I thought I was like twin brother or something like that. Cybok's mother was a Vulcan princess. Upon her death, oh. Cybok and I were raised as brothers. Why have you never said anything about this then, huh? I was beginning to vary. Where is the kit? It's all right, Pavel. Cybok will explain everything. Oh, what? They've joined his side? Share yours with me and gain strength from the sharing. Wait, this is actually kind of cool, though, at the same time. I kind of like him as a villain. You did, Jim. There's got to be a way out of this place. This is the new brig, Captain. It is escape proof. Everything's escape proof until someone escapes. Following new course, warp seven. Oh my god, he got Chekhov too. Which lies beyond the Great Barrier, at the center of the galaxy. Oh, we're going to the center, baby. What's the Great Barrier? N. Stand back. Uh, D, and a word. He's gonna say stand, stand back. New word. B. Yeah, yeah, stand back. Stand, stand back. back. They didn't even stand back though. At the blow screen, you can't miss it, Mr. Scott. You're amazing. There's nothing amazing about it. I know this ship like the back of my hand. <laughs> what? What? Are you okay? He just died. Whoa, that looks so cool. Is this why Kirk was climbing at the start of the movie so we could get this later on? I'd be so scared. Like, what if you slip off that ladder? You're dead. I hate ladders. Where's Spock? Oh my god. Where did he get those boots? Where did he get those boots? Booster rockets. If I activate them now, Captain, we'll be propelled upward at an unpredictable rate. Fire the rockets! Oh my god. Poor Sulu's face. Oh. Oh. Nice. Nice. Request emergency assistance. Acknowledge. Understood, Enterprise. We are just- Oh my god. These bozos. The people of your planet once believed their world was flat. It's true. Some people still do. Are you afraid to hear me out? I'm afraid of nothing. What are you afraid of for real, though? Present condition. Are they in love with each other? Yours. Shakari. Have they always been in love with each other? Sounds like brainwashing to me. That's what I said. Well, I... 
Wow, this is cool. Oh. I've done everything I can do. You've got to hang on. Oh my god, what the heck is this cool, but so sad for Scotty. Or Bones, I should say. Why do I always mix up their names? I'm so sorry. Why can I watch him suffer like this? You're a doctor. Yeah, you are. Oh, he ended it. He ended it. That wasn't the worst of it. No, was it? No. Sure. Oh my god, there's more? No. I love this bone stuff that we're getting. First step. The other steps. We'll take together. Dude, this villain is actually cool. I feel like he's a little wasted in this movie because he's so awesome. What is this? I believe we are witnessing my birth. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh little baby feet of Spock. Son. So human. Okay, be nice to this man. Spock. Feels unaccepted by his father. This is who they are. Didn't you know that? I guess he didn't. Yeah, there you go. I'm so excited. This is literally the best part of the movie. The things we carry with us, the things that make us who we are. If we lose them, we lose ourselves. Kirk is speaking facts. Since that time, I have found myself and my place. I know who I am. Yeah, he has. I, uh, I guess you better count me out, too. Oh, okay. Okay, the crew stays together. If we do. Will that convince you that my vision was true? Your vision. I mean, there's a literally you either die or you make it through, so. Oh, the Great Barrier looks kind of cool. I can survive this. I say they're wrong. I say the danger is an illusion. We have no instrument ratings. Easy. He didn't really have any anyways. The Enterprise was already a, basically a bucket in space. Uh, Whoa, that looks like ink in water. Did they make it? Right? It must have. You know, it didn't take that long to get through the barrier. It took like 10 seconds. Why has no one tried that before? If we are, then life is a dream. No, oh, row, 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 your boat comes back. Oh, they're on the they're on board, they're on board. It's a boldly go where no man has gone before. I think that won't turn us around. Because you too must know. Yeah. I'm so curious, Kirk, you cannot turn the ship around. You must be curious. God's a busy man. I wonder what this is. Oh, I'm so curious. Cool, it's like purple ground. You know, for a planet created by like a god, this is supposed to be created by a god, it's kind of lame. I won't lie. <laughs> it's so barren. This is a nice shot. This is a good shot. The music is so good right now. Okay, there's like a beauty right now though, like the sun peeking over this cliff with this amazing, almost ethereal music in the background. It's so good, I have like chills. Ah, oh, you have to ruin the moment, stupid Klingon ship. Someone's gotta say it. It's a barren dump. Someone's gotta say it. Perhaps. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? What's happening? Maybe it ain't no barren wasteland after all. I'm sorry I spoke. Oh. The planet is angry. I am very confused. 
right now. It just like entrapped them in a lot of stone pillars. Looks almost like a rib cage. Oh, maybe more like a hallway actually, you know, like a room that the that the planet made for them. What the heck? This is so cool. Does this better suit your expectations? <laughs> it was not. The barrier stood between us, but we breached it. Magnificent. I gotta make that stronger next time. Then I shall make use of this starship. It will be your chariot! Wait, no. This isn't good. Excuse me. It will carry my power to every corner of creation. Yeah, yeah, this is bad. What does God need with a starship? Yeah, exactly. With a starship? Jim, no, Jim's asking the right questions now. Question. He's listening to the score and hearing the evil tones of the score. Then here is the proof you see. Oh my days. Poor Kirk got a little lightning shock there. Friend! He doubts me. You've not answered his question. What does God need with Yes, Spock, thank you. Then a god who flicks pain. Yes. For his own pleasure. Yes, thank you. An eternity I've been imprisoned in this place. Okay, yeah. Bring me the ship or I will destroy you. The ship. Don't bring in the ship. Do it. So there's a great barrier, almost like a prison. Or watch these. Itself, like the prison walls. Vanity cyborg, we must find no. a way. You must save yourselves. Forgive me, brother. Forgive me. Is he gonna... Oh, live long and prosper, live long and prosper. I couldn't help but notice your pain. My pain? It runs deep. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Torpedo armed. But Captain, we're firing directly on your position. Send it down, okay. Mr. Takeoff, now! And then teleport us up, beam us up, Scotty. Oh, that looks like it's such a sick shot. It kind of looks like it's in warp, though. <laughs> Guys, there is literally a Klingon ship. It went invisible. Guys. She's got partial power, sir. I might be able to take two of you. Beam up Spock and Dr. McCoy. Now. Yeah. Now, just. Oh, but now he's alone. And you know what Jim said at the start of this movie? He said he's going to die alone. Thank you, Mr. Sp I know there's another Star Trek movie, but it could be like a Spock situation where he dies in this one and comes back. Or maybe he's not even in the next one. Doctor, status report. Klingon captain wishes to name his terms, Mr. Spock. On screen. Terms of surrender is death. Captain Kirk is on the planet below. Then give me his coordinates! Do it. Give him the God coordinates. But then God gets a spaceship. <laughs> what the heck? Whoa. Nice. That, that didn't kill that being though, did it? Because that being seems so powerful. Ah, nice! I... apologize. Whoa, big words for a Klingon. Gunner. Oh, okay, Spock. I... thought I was going to die. Not possible. Because we were there with you. Yeah, yeah. Look at that, those two ships flying side by side, crazy stuff. He's not out there, Bones. Maybe he's right here. Human heart. In your heart, with your friends. I lost a brother once. I was lucky I got him back. Ah, he's talking about Spock. Oh, thank you. I thought you said men like us don't have families. We do. It's each other. I'm just gonna sit there and pluck that thing, or are you gonna play something? Play row, row, row your boat, please. Yes. Your boat deadly down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily
Yes, he's singing too. Go Spock. Go Spock. I'd buy your album. And that was my reaction to Star Trek V The Final Frontier, the 1989 sci fi action Star Trek film starring William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, James Duhon, Nichelle Nichols, Walter Ko Koenig, and you know basically everyone from Star Trek and then some some other people as well. That movie was uh you know what I mean? It was like meh. There were some great moments sprinkled in this movie. Like like there were some really good moments. There was some really good Star Trek character moments in this. But then it, the whole that all of that stuff was kind of surrounded by uh it was just a little boring. It was a little tedious things at the start of the movie that felt like they were being set up never amounted to really anything at the end of the movie or if they did amount to something it was just very lackluster the effects were eh the directing was very static was again very boring it, there were some good shots but not even as many good shots as in Leonard Nimoy's debut for the third movie where I thought the, the directing was very meh in that movie as well, but there were some brilliant wide shots. Even in this movie, there weren't that many. There were like one or two good shots, but I couldn't really name any other ones. But then again, there were still some great Star Trek moments in this movie. So that's not to say that I did not enjoy this movie. It's definitely my least favorite out of all five of the Star Trek movies that I've seen so far on this channel and like my least favorite by quite a bit as well because three and four being my second and third least favorites are very close to each other in terms of that and this one is like a definite least favorite but that doesn't mean that I still didn't enjoy this movie. There were definitely moments in this movie that I really enjoyed and I thought the villain of this movie was actually really cool and I just wish that he was in one a better movie and two that he kind of did more in this movie because I thought that his premise, his concept, what he could do was really awesome and I really enjoyed him whenever he was on screen. I just felt like they kind of wasted him on screen because they also had that other random Klingon, like Claw, whatever his name was, who was also like a side villain in this movie, who was the most unnecessary character ever in this entire thing. And I understand that he was there to represent the Klingons coming to save, to save that person, to save that general that had been kidnapped, right? But at the same time, that doesn't make any sense because the Romulans didn't send anyone and that woman who was a Romulan was captured. The Klingons didn't really send anyone because he got the message and then he's like, oh, Kirk will be there. So let's just go engage the Starship Enterprise. And he didn't care about saving the other guy, the, the Klingon guy in the first place. So having him in the movie just really made no sense. It kind of like... I don't know. I didn't. I didn't like him. I didn't like it in the movie. I didn't like why he was there. He didn't really have any story arc. He didn't really have any purpose in the movie. Anyways, like yes, he guess he saves Kirk with his ship at the end of the movie, but like I, you could have the writers could have found another way for them to save Kirk at the end of this movie. So like I don't know. Get him out of the movie, and I think make the movie more focused on Cybok, and I think you would have had a better story and a way more interesting villain with Cybok. Anyways, so developing that character would have been really cool. And then before. Before we get into the reviews of this movie as well, I just want to talk about something that I might forget about from like the, the things that happened at the start of the movie and then how they kind of portrayed at the end of the movie. So I might forget about that later on in the review. So I'm going to talk about it now and then I'll get into the usual structure of these reviews. So my biggest issue with this movie is actually kind of what they did with Kirk and his character in terms of seeing death and stuff like that because at the start of this movie he almost dies and then Bones asks him like did you not think you were gonna die and he's like no I didn't think I was gonna die because I was with you guys and I know I'm gonna die alone and then that comes back later on in the movie he's alone Bones and Spock have teleported phased out, out however you want to call it out of the ship and he's alone with this godlike entity who was trying to kill him. And I was like, this is gonna be a really interesting situation. Obviously, his friends are still with him, you know, and they're gonna pull that card and stuff, and someone's gonna say the end of the movie, and his friends are still with him, and they're gonna save him somehow, but he is alone. And I would love to see how he kind of comes to terms with him potentially about to die. I think it would have been a really impactful emotional moment, especially because it was brought up at the start of this movie. I was expecting it to come back, I was expecting Kirk to be alone, maybe even be on the 
brink of death before he comes back but they didn't do anything with it you know he's in the ship alone and then all of a sudden he's running up a cliff alone and then the klingon ship is there and then he gets on the klingon ship and then he's like i thought i was gonna die i was alone and then spock's like you weren't alone because we were here and it just felt so tacked on and just so unthought through because it happens so fast you never really see kirk's reaction to anything you never see him in despair you never see him contemplating death and i know kirk doesn't usually do do that and there's always a there's like there's no no win situations for Kirk I know that we've been through this with his character but still because the movie set up that he knows he's going to die alone and then he's in this situation where he's probably or the odds are in his favor that he's going to die alone you would think that they would show him kind of contemplating life remembering his friends remembering the good times of his life remembering his mistakes his guilt and stuff like that you think you'd see these emotions on him and it would be this very impactful moment and then as he's about to die or something like a laser is going towards him or something like that or maybe he's been hit and he's slowly dying from an injury or something like that but then that never happens you know and it's just a little disappointing because they did so much well they didn't do so much setup but they set it up at the start of the movie only for nothing really to happen with it or what happened with it was just so lackluster Okay, so getting into the reviews of this movie now, and then I'm going to talk about the score, which I really like. Jerry Goldsmith did actually a really good job with the score. And then I'm going to talk about the things that I did like about this movie, because I did like a few things, and I would like to mention them, because this movie wasn't all bad. And then I'll just get into anything else that I have left. So 5.5 out of 10 on IMDb, and 22% on Rotten Tomatoes. So yeah, the worst reviews of any Star Trek movie by quite a margin. I think the next one is like 6 point something. So this one is like a whole number a whole number down Rotten Tomatoes 22% that is definitely the lowest by critics as well it just seems like people don't like this movie or seem that this like this movie is very mediocre at best I'm also really sorry about any of the noise that you hear outside uh, this my friend has a friend over and he's also cooking at the same time with the fan on so it's gonna be a little loud in the background so apologies for that but yeah I think I agree with the audience score more than the critic score here 22% is very very harsh for this movie and I know Rotten Tomatoes is like 22% of critics give it a positive score but still I think this is a little bit harsh I think a 5.5 is a very good score for this movie you know mostly this movie is mediocre it's a little boring it's a little tedious and stuff like that it's very static it doesn't really give you that sense of adventure but it also doesn't give you that sense of comedy that the fourth movie gave you it feels very stuck in itself but the 5.5 I think also lends itself to there are some good things about this movie. There is a sprinkle of hope in this movie which hopefully gets developed more in the sixth one. But yeah, the things that I really liked about this movie. Oh, actually I'll talk about Jerry Goldsmith's score first. His score was really nice. I'm really glad that he was back. He's a great composer. Obviously his Star Trek theme song was awesome. The way that he composed it in this movie, it was beautiful. It was hopeful. You know, as Star Trek should, it got me into this movie and especially during the credit sequence I was like, yeah, Star Trek 5. I know this movie's supposed to be not the best but still I'm really excited for this and then like the score that he had on that ethereal godlike planet was so beautiful it was kind of it kind of gave me a reminded me I guess of the score from Star Trek 3 when or not Star Trek 3 yeah, Star Trek 3 when Spock is being basically regenerated. His memories are being regenerated into Spock and it was like that ethereal score. It was very lingering and stuff like that. It kind of reminded me of that in this movie, but there was more, there was a lot more like hope to it instead of like what's going to happen. It was more like a hopeful etherealness and stuff like that. And I don't know, I got just chills from seeing the lingering looks on people's faces and just everyone's in awe of this situation. The music is telling us that we should be in awe of this situation and is so beautiful and it's just the music lingers as much as the people's expressions linger and I don't know it was a really nice mix of visuals and music and I thought Jerry Goldsmith did a, a fantastic job with this movie and yeah so some of the things that I liked about this movie I really liked the villain and I really liked what he could do not like brainwashing people I guess but making people see their pain and that moment where Bones and Spock see their pain was such a good moment and I think a very needed moment in the Star Trek franchise. Obviously I haven't watched the show so I don't know if they have done this in the show before, if they have elaborated on these characters a lot like they did in this movie in the show, but in the movies, if you've just watched the movies like I have, they aren't like, they are definitely fleshed out characters, but you don't know much about their past. And I'm really glad that this movie kind of emphasized this tragedy that has happened in their past before. And I really like Bones's because I don't know too much about Bones 
bones, but I really like, he has grown on me quite a lot as a character. Obviously, I really liked him, but his emotional side of bones has really grown on me a lot as a character, and I'm glad we really got to see it in full force in this movie when he's talking about his dad. It was just a very powerful moment for the character and a much needed moment for the character, and as well with Spock, seeing Spock be disregarded by his father almost as a baby because he looks too human but then him also saying that I've come to terms with this I've come to terms with myself I'm happy with myself now and stuff it was a really satisfying moment for the character I thought it was shot pretty well as well it was just a very it was just a very much needed moment and almost like this very magical moment in Star Trek that I was like wow I didn't know that I needed this in Star Trek but I really enjoyed this moment and I kind of wish that the movie had taken more steps in that area of storytelling i guess also just seeing our core castmates sit around a campfire together and just joke and sing row 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 your boat and stuff and have have bones make fun of spock for being not human enough and have spock not understand anything because he's half vulcan and he thinks logically and then kirk in the middle just kind of talking and drinking and have them be drunk it was just like really sweet it was really nice I really enjoyed it. It was very wholesome, and I really liked that. I, I mean, the cast, obviously, I haven't seen the team show, and it's only been like four weeks, five weeks of me watching Star Trek at this point, so I'm not as attached to the characters as probably most of this audience watching, if not all of the audience watching is. However, I can still feel that connection that I have between them. Like, they do feel almost like family to me because I've been watching them for five weeks straight at this point, and I really do care about these characters, and I can't imagine how wholesome it would be for someone who's been watching these characters for all of their childhood and maybe even all of their adult life and then seeing them sitting around a campfire just having a good time there is something just so innocent and sweet about that that you haven't really gotten in Star Trek before where these people are just lounging around maybe you have in the show but in the movies we haven't really where they're just lounging around just having fun laughing getting drunk it was just a really nice moment and I really enjoyed that as well and yeah I thought the effects were uh, in this movie I thought that it, you could tell that this movie kind of had a lower budget I don't know if it had a higher budget or lower budget in Star Trek 4 it felt like it had a lower budget and it felt like they were trying to do too much with the budget that they had because they had like this god figure they went into this weird part of space with a barrier that was almost like I think it would kind of represent like a prison in space almost to keep this person in you had a lot of you had like space battles and stuff like that not huge space battles but you had that Klingon ship going after the Enterprise in space and stuff like that like so there was a lot of stuff happening a lot of different locations a lot of different planets and stuff and you know it just kind of felt all a little lackluster like the idea was too big for the budget that they had and so it didn't really translate on screen as well as it could have that's what i really liked about the fourth movie because i was assuming by the fourth movie the budget had dropped significantly significantly from the first movie and so i really liked that in the fourth movie they didn't really need that many special effects because they had just gone back to the 1980s and boom you're there you don't need to have these big grand effects space effects if you have a smaller budget it was a really great idea and one that saves a lot of money and so I really enjoyed that I really liked the concept of it and just how smart the idea was as well and this one it felt like they wanted to get back to almost Star Trek the motion picture with these really nice visuals and stuff like that or Star Trek 2 at least with these really nice visuals in space and stuff like that exploring but the movie never reached the height of the adventures of like maybe Star Trek the motion picture or the action of Star Trek 2 the Wrath of Khan or even the comedy of Star Trek 4 so it kind of was just in this weird limbo space of in between trying to be all of these movies but not having the budget and not having the problem potentially like time even to make a movie as good as those or the or just the personnel to make a movie as good as those movies you know so it was a very strange movie for me I enjoyed bits of it I didn't enjoy other bits of it or I thought they were just mediocre at best other bits of it I thought this movie was okay definitely my least favorite one but yeah I'm not really going to talk about the cast I already talked about kind of the cast that I wanted to talk about like our main three trio and what I liked about them in this movie and I liked their their scenes where they're looking at the past and stuff like that and everyone else I thought did a good job in this movie but there wasn't really a standout for me the villain Lawrence Luckinbill I didn't mention him at the start but I thought he was fantastic I wish he had more screen time and yeah that is my reaction to review to Star Trek V The Final Frontier, the 1989 sci-fi action film. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to these wonderful, beautiful, amazing people right here for supporting me and supporting my channel. It really does mean a lot. I'm actually really excited for Star Trek VI because a lot of people have been saying that Star Trek VI is either their favorite or their second favorite behind the Wrath of Khan or even saying that 2, 
four and six are almost interchangeable for them in terms of how much they like and four I thought was really fun but I didn't think it was as good as Star Trek 2 but I'm really excited for six it's the final one with the original cast and yeah it's going to be sad but it's going to be very enjoyable I think at the same time so anyways thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time for my next movie reaction